Joining us now, Jay Clayton, former SEC chairman, a CNBC contributor. He's currently a senior policy advisor at Sullivan and Cromwell, a law firm that represents Coinbase and is an advisor at One River, a digital asset management firm recently acquired by Coinbase. Jay, uh, hey, Gensler uh, is being pretty direct in what he's saying, and it seems a lot more dangerous right now to be betting on crypto capitalists than it is to be betting, say, just on Bitcoin. What does this moment mean? Look, I, I think Chair Gensler, and I, and I did watch the program this morning and um, appreciate the soundbite. I, I think that Chair Gensler did a good job articulating the commission's position around um, the trading and let's go back to the issuance of uh, securities um, where they believe that um, what I would say is crypto entrepreneurs have tried to classify uh, what are clearly securities in their view as non-securities. And the soundbite was about uh, basically skipping over um, the admittedly costly, um, but uh, what I would say is proven to be effective securities laws around issuance and trading. So it was pretty clear that uh, Chair Gensler believes that that definition of securities, and, and I was of the same view when I was at the SEC, is, is fairly broad and that he believes that it, particularly issuers of these securities um, and the trading firms that support them have taken advantage of what I would say is non-regulation mm -hmm. in order to distribute securities. Um, I think that there are a lot of other people who are very experienced in the securities laws who, who think that uh, the chair's view is too broad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what we have here, what we have here is, are two different lawsuits um, I would say that the Coinbase situation is much more about what is a security and what is not, as opposed to the Binance situation, which is really about um, charges of fraud, commingling, commingling of funds, um, and yeah. efforts to evade. Uh, Jay, this reminds me in some ways of the gig economy conversation from five, ten years ago where Uber was pushing for a, a new form uh, of, of ride sharing kind of a new form of employment, taxi companies and cities were pushing back. And for a while, uh, Uber was, was winning and gaining ground through unorthodox means. The crypto industry, to me, seems to have assumed a similar playbook of, hey, this is innovation, that the forces of, of you know, the status quo are going to fight it, but we're going to win. But the tide seems to be turning, no? Yeah, John, I agree. I think, five, go back five years ago during the ICO craze, um, something that the SEC uh, cracked down upon, that was the pervasive view, that regulation was going to bend to innovation, that regulation in, in the financial markets was going to bend to the in innovation and efficiencies brought by crypto. I think the mature view, including the mature view among many who are crypto proponents, is that that's not going to happen. Right. I think what we have had is a narrowing of the debate as to what is a security, what is a commodity, what is something else? I'll note that at the same time we had these two lawsuits filed today, we had a hearing in the House Agricultural Committee where, where that was very much the issue. It was how do, we, how do we classify different instruments that do different things in a way that it ensures investor protection, um, but so, also what I would say is faci facilitates what clearly a lot of people want. So, Jay, I think the difficulty then for investors is how do you value a company, uh, a crypto company, uh, that, that came public perhaps under this idea that there was this revolution in finance where crypto was the future, right, and, and uh, regulation would bend to innovation. Now it's clearly more nuanced. The conversation has turned to AI, has turned to mixed reality, et cetera. Uh, how, how do you value growth from here? I know that's not exactly your area, but uh, is it a moderation of those growth expectations based on the reality of uh, regulation and possibly new laws? Well, look, I think, John, you're, you're, you're asking a whole lot of questions, um, or I should say, a whole lot of factors in the question that you're asking. Crypto is a technology as much as it is a product. One of one of the questions that investors across the board, and I'm not going to speak about any specific company, need to think about is, is, is crypto technology going to add an efficiency or add an advantage that they that they that they hope to reap the benefits of as, as an investor? Another thing that you're saying is, is our crypto products 
Are they under regulatory scrutiny? Of course they are. We, we've known that for some period of time. Um, you know, and investing in the face of that uncertainty, that's that's what people do. I think a clear yeah. message that has come from a clear message that has come from everybody for a long time is this is not the place to put your assets that, that you are looking at as safe. Right. This is an area where you're investing um, in uncertainty. But there are many smart people, John, who believe that the technology continues to hold great promise.